What's going on everyone? Today I've got an exciting episode for those that don't know two of the most common stick welding electrodes, the 6013 and the 6011. Let's talk about it. Now I would say most of the time here on the channel you see us using a lot of 7018s and 6010s and that's really common, right? For especially real industrial stuff. But what about the little guys? The farms, the little shops, the sheet metal repair, furniture builders, is there an option for them? And that's right, that's 6011 and 6013. Matter of fact, I used these two rods before I used any other electrode like a 6010 or 7018. I used these whenever I was in high school working on pipe fences or small cattle guards, just junk around the farm or just general stuff around town. At first glance they seem like pretty much the same rod but they're very different for their applications. They're both fast freeze rods. That puddle solidifies fairly quickly. They both perform well on nasty, dirty material. They're all position rods. That's what these ones mean. Now that three and that one is a little bit different. And that comes down to the bottom here that this has a cellulose base flux and this one has a rutile base flux. That's basically all that this is telling you is what these are gonna be a little bit different. Now they are very commonly used on a lot of the same stuff like truck frames, maybe galvanized material, farm equipment, but you'll see a little bit more of the thicker materials used for the 6011 and a lot more of the thinner materials used for the 6013. Because of these ones and threes here on the electrode classification, this one is gonna give it a deeper penetration, which makes it great for dirty metals and poor fit up. Whereas this electrode classification makes the 13 shallow penetration, good for sheet metal work. Those are gonna be the two nuances between these two electrodes. This one here is the 6011. It's gonna be a lot more active than say the 6013 as you run it and weld with it. So you're gonna to have to fine tune your amperages. We're gonna do some demoing today with both of these electrodes on thicker metals, on thinner metals. We're gonna be going over to the machine first so we can see what we can set it to. Now all those fun facts about those electrodes, I didn't just make them up. They're actually all written down here on the electrode box. And that's what's really nice about all these boxes. They give you fun facts about the electrodes you may not have used in a long time or have never used before. Just read the freaking box. Same thing with the amperage. They've got them written on here. We both got 332 electrodes. For flat position, we've got 50 to 75 amps and for vertical or overhead, 30 to 70. The biggest difference with that in the 6013 is the flat, we have 45 to 100. So we're able to go colder and hotter with this rod and the vertical and overhead, we have 45 to 90. So kind of a similar thing. I don't really know the biggest difference on the amperage. If we should play around with that, we probably will have to because again, they're two different applications for two different rods, but you could probably still achieve the same characteristics with both. If I want to weld sheet metal with a 6011, I'm sure I could adjust the machine to do so. If I want to do the 6013 to weld a little something thicker, thicker, maybe an open root. Let's see if we can get through. Right now we're going to start everything off somewhere around 80, 85. Let's try it out. Now the box rod did say the 6011 is going to be the best bet for penetration, right? And it did say for this rod vertical position max at 70 amps. So I should probably listen to the box a little bit. I'm going to come down to 75 because I still like things to be a little bit hotter. We're going to treat it no different than a 6010 as if we were doing a vertical weld. This is quarter inch plate, 332 land, 332 gap, 332, 6011. And we're going to try to basically do this get a good root in there, see, check it out, and then try the 6013 with the exact same settings. Again, we're on DC positive. Yeah, this is going in really easy. 75 amps, keeping my uh, keyhole maintained by my arc link being pretty tight in there. I would say I'm kind of rubbing that rod against the land. I don't know if I'm getting much of a beat in there with this tiny 332 rod, but I'm pretty sure I'm breaking things down. I could probably even turn it up. But honestly, pretty, pretty effortless to put a root in with that. Let's see, with a little bit of a wire wheel. Yeah, she's a little squirrely. I think I could probably get away with some more amperage. We're gonna bump it up five, and then we'll try out this other rod. I'm gonna need to put a grinding disc on here to feather that. Now that I've got just a hair more amperage, again, with this rod being so small, I think I can keep it lit a little longer and fill a little bit more. Dive in. I'm going to try to blow a bigger hole with this amperage, but go slower. Make more room for this weld. Having to add a little bit more step to it. It's definitely hotter. So she's climbing. Yeah, it looks like we're getting a little undercut. A little, a little too hot, a little too spicy. It's definitely digging, breaking down. That's the whole point, right? Now, the only difference I'm going to make here is switch to a 6013 electrode. I'm gonna change no amperage settings, still 80 amps, and we're just gonna to try to finish it. Still gonna feather it.
much more sluggish. It's got a big hole to fill right here, which that made pretty easy work of that. Honestly, this is welding just fine too. Kind of dripping in there, staying much higher up instead of on my puddle. Just kind of staying to the top side of the keyhole and just dripping in. Maybe that rod or something's getting hotter or got a rod angle. Wrong angle, but she's getting a little bit wide open now. Hmm. I'm not gonna feather that because I'm lazy. Alright, there ain't no light going through it. Let's take a look. Give it a quick jimmy because that 6013 has a lot heavier slag and probably a little lower than we think. Well, if I'm being honest, I really don't like any of my 6011. I like the 6013 a lot more. So towards the top here, it's not as great. A 332nd diameter rod is probably not the best for this type of open root because what I'm seeing in this 6011 here is a little bit of undercut or underfill in the toes of that weld. I don't have enough metal or I'm not, I'm going too fast. I'm gonna really need to stack it in there if I'm gonna see it fill in the sides. Whereas the 6013 up here, it seemed to just, just kind of just drip into it. It honestly worked out really well for the vertical position at 80 amps. Maybe if I cooled things off instead of turning things up for the open route for the 6011, I might be able to spend a little bit more time in there. I'm not sure. It would take some playing around with it for the open route. But honestly, I have an opposite opinion of what I thought going into it. I thought I was gonna do a little bit better with the 6011. And again, everything's circumstantial. If I went to a bigger rod size, I bet I'd see some different results too. But now let's try out some T-joints. The box of rods will actually tell you how to operate these rods, especially in a vertical position. It says you need to be using a step pattern for both. However, do you have to? I think the 6011 will probably see a little bit more stepping, and the 6013, I'm probably just gonna run it like I would run a 7018. Now for a T-joint, we're gonna use the 6013 first. I don't think there's gonna be a whole lot of action going on. I don't think I'm gonna have to step it to get out of my puddle if I'm in trouble. Same amperage as that open route we were just doing, 80 amps. Seems pretty manageable at 80 amps with this 332 rod. I got just like a little bit of shake going into it. I wouldn't say I need to step anything. And again, going up in rod size, you might have to change your technique because you're gonna be depositing a little bit more metal. And I've always found that like a 332 diameter rod is usually a lot more forgiving than an eighth inch diameter rod. But it's a real sluggish rod. It's really good for climbing. We haven't made it very far. That slag stack's crazy high. Let's keep walling. I'm gonna turn it up. I think 81 might be a little cold. Again, the 6013, we can go up to 90. At least that's what the box says. So we're gonna go up to 90 now. Yeah, this 90's definitely digging a lot more. I don't like that. I don't like that at all. We can go back down. Yeah, 80 amps seems to be the ticket for this 332 6013. I'm treating it no different than I would treat a 332 7018. I would say that this isn't depositing as much metal as a 332 7018 though. And that slag stack's really weird. I'll show you guys. Take the old spud, give it some swipes. Yeah, that heavy slag does come off really easy, usually in a big chunk. This is that 80 amps that we were doing all the way up. It was nice and chill. I turned it up, it dug right into that restart, and then it just started stacking really tall in the center, which not what I was looking for. I wanted to go back to that flatter bead profile. It ends up being pretty good at 80. We're gonna run one more bead and then switch to the 6011s and see what amps we like doing that vertical up with. It's okay. And yes, before we continue, I do see that I missed every single one of my tie-ins. Thank you. Now the box recommends a maximum of 70 amps for this vertical 6011 and a stepping pattern as we go up. Now again, these are both all position rods. I don't know about the 6013 if it's good downhill. We'll get into that on the sheet metal bit here in a minute. Uh, but first we're gonna try this 6011. I'm treating it a lot like I would a 6010, kind of whipping up and away, kind of leaving that puddle and then coming back right on top of it. 
and trying to pause and fill. The 70 amp seems to be okay. Yeah, that looks fine. I just need to kind of get a little bit steadier with my hands here. As we go up, we're coming up and away, back on it. Up and away, back on it. Leaving a very little to no arc length in there to not smother in that electrode. I'm liking this one a lot better, comparatively speaking to the 6013. And we're having to do a little bit of a different technique, and maybe I have to go to that technique with the 6013 like the rod guy said it should. And I'm trying to keep my ripples pretty tight. I want to stay, keep a nice solid weld throughout. We're going to do probably one more rod to finish this side up and give it another look. One thing I definitely like more about the 6011 is that slag isn't as heavy, so it's easier to see where I'm tying into as I come down. It sounds weird. Both of these rods are AC welding electrodes or DC reverse. A rod manufacturer does not recommend DC straight, DC negative. I like them a little bit more than I like the 6013 going up, which is kind of reverse of the butt weld that we did, where I thought I was going to like the 6011 more, like the 6013 more, and then for the T joint, opposite on that thought. But hey, to each their own. So we got a decent weld over here. Again, the 6013 looks kind of rough. Now I'm gonna snap this off and we're gonna do a couple 16 gauge sheet metal welds and see if I don't mess these suckers right up. Interesting stuff so far. Now we're gonna be doing the 16 gauge. I've got three weld joints here in the 3G position, all butt welds. 16 gauge is where I pretty much will draw the line when it comes to stick welding. I'm not, not into it. So. We're gonna try a couple different things. We're gonna try downhill, uphill, 6013, 6011, and see which one poses the best results. Right now we've got a 6013, and for a vertical position, the rod manufacturer says 45 to 90. I'm gonna say we should probably try somewhere around 50 amps to start. This sounds like it's gonna be hard to keep lit, but 16 gauge is thin. I don't like it. Vertical up. Oh, already a hole super duper quick. Maybe I just got to weld a little bit faster. Yeah. I'll fill that hole in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go, 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 go. Oh, another hole. One way or another. Go faster, go faster, go faster, go faster, go faster, go faster, go faster. Don't stop, don't stop, don't stop, don't stop. Ah! <sighs> that was a little scary. Now we just give it a jimmy. I don't love that, you know? It's not like the best shape of weld, but vertical's not that easy. As you saw, I mean, it took us a, a second to get going and not put a hole in stuff. I mean, it just took me moving and grooving to have any kind of success. There's still that line of fusion. We're getting, we're getting definitely some penetration into it. I'm not hitting that line exactly. It's still doable, right? That's still welded sheet metal, regardless of what it is. It's still stick welding, vertical up on thin metal. That's tough. Now we're gonna try the 6011 on this side, do some vertical up. The 6011 recommends somewhere around 30 to 70. We're gonna keep it at the same amperage here at 50 to see between welding that 6013 uphill between this and 6011. bigger hole. Why are you the way you are? Did the ground fall off or am I falling off? Let's see if I can do my step up and away trick. Nope, bigger hole. Okay, maybe we go down to the lower amperages where it says 45. I'm not doing that. I'm not welding 45 amps going uphill with the 6011. Not happening, dude. Let's try downhill. We're gonna go 55 amps, and we're just gonna run it down this time. Super fast, super fast, super fast. Still putting in holes. Stay on my line, move faster, move faster, move faster, move faster, move faster, move faster. I left 
a ton of holes. This is a little much for a 16 gauge, I think. I could probably fine tune some stuff, chill things out and move really fast. We could still make it happen. We could still make a job out of it, but definitely not an uphill rod on this 16 gauge, gee whiz. So I think we can get away with the 6011 downhill and we can kind of get away with the 6013 uphill. Let's see if we can get away with the 6013 downhill, 55 amp, 16 gauge steel. Awesome, awesome. All right, one more time. Hmm, that puddle is struggling right now. It's gonna be hard to keep that thing lit going down. It says we're good for 70, so let's try 65. Mm, man, this is not a good downhill ride. We're just, the slag's rolling over top of me. I can't stay in front of it. We're putting a weld on. I don't know if it's good or not, if it's doing anything. We're gonna turn it up to 75. I wanna try to outrun this puddle a little better. It's pretty tough. That slag is just, just wants to roll right over top of my arc. Can't see anything. The dripping. I don't know about that being a downhill rod, but uphill for sure. That's like one of those things like you could, but should you? Yeah, that downhill 6013, after cleaning out the slag, you could see a bunch of lack of fusion on this side. We might have blistered the back, but we hardly got a weld where we needed it because we couldn't see it with that slag running over top of it. Now going uphill, we just had to be a little bit better on our technique. Same thing with the downhill 6011. I think all in all, what to take away from this episode is there are different rods, stick rods, for different variety of applications. Just like there are other processes that are a little bit better for this type of application. But that doesn't mean that you can't get it done with a stick rod. You just got to find the right one and figure out how to use it the right way. Hope you guys enjoyed this episode of Weld.com. We'll see you on the next Weld. Welcome in everyone. Today we're going to go over some of those nuances, some of those oddities of the most common welding electrodes that there are. Welcome in YouTube. Today we're going to be going over some of the... Welcome in YouTube. Today if you... I don't even like this angle. I need to be down a little.